Hi everyone. Um, so this video is an update to the other um, video I just did <clears throat> about the um, scalar, specifically about GPS control. Now that last video, I was not trying to go into any kind of depth on it because it's a big subject. And in this video, I'm only going to touch the surface. Um, but it should be enough just to get you started so that you can understand where, where, you know, how and where you can get to it and get the best out of it. Right. So uh, as you can see, there's my 1000, which is the main reason I developed this monitor in the first place. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a demo on it and put it into SCART and then we're going to start playing around with it. Okay. Right, let me switch it as I've already shown you this, but press the VGA button. Don't want that one. The next one. Remember you skip through by just pressing the VGA button. So that now has gone. Okay, Scott. It's pinged up. I'm gonna turn the volume down. So now what we've got here is the as you can see on the right hand side of the image is the HDMI output. Now it's very important to understand this. What I'm looking at on the monitor is perfectly smooth 50 hertz. I tried setting this uh, the capture system up, but this is as good as I can get it, and it's not as good as I'm looking at actually at the monitor. Okay, so before people say it's not very smooth, it's a bit jerky, that's because it's probably getting interrupted to 60 hertz, and the whole process kind of kills it. If you're looking at the monitor, it's perfectly smooth. I've got to stress that. Anyway. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, there's our little job dial. I can't zoom in any further, but you don't really need to look at that. What we're going to look at is GPS control. Now, I'm going to now switch to a different display. As you can see down here, there's the jog dial and the OLED. Now, they are basically a little window for the GPS control. Okay, that's what they're there for. But we need to connect to it. So now if you go, now I'm on a Mac, if you're on a Windows or Linux, it'll be different. Okay, I can only show you from my point of view. But I'm going to go up here. As you can see, I'm going to select GPS control. Now it's hooked in. Now usually what you would do is you type that in, GPS control, and it will go and find it. Um, and on my other Mac, it does actually find it, but on this one, it comes up with this. Now, uh, that led me a little bit astray. I wasn't sure what was going on here. So what I did was I went up to here and I opened up my network preferences. And you can see Wi-Fi, you can see it's connected, but can you see this address? Yeah, right here is an address. And on this, I don't know what yours will be, but it should in theory be the same, but 192.168.4100. That gives you an idea of how to get to it, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here 192.168.4.1. Okay, now we're on GBS control. Now this, as I said, is the heart of the system. Now you'll notice I've got a load of profiles set up. When you get it, you will only have empty. Yeah, that's all you're gonna have. You'll literally just have empty set up and that's the default. But as you can see, I've set up a whole load in here. And you'll also notice at the top, it says 1280 by 720. Remember the discussion from the previous video? But in a short period of time, there'll be an update with 50 hertz across and then you'll be able to select 1280 by 1024 or 1280 by 960 whichever suits you best for whatever you're going to put into it because again I don't know what you're putting into it so by default the first one to load is the one that's highlighted so you can see this has got the red line around it that means when you save that that is the one that's going to load however when you press on the jog dial down there and you select presets then it will pick one of these now I think it goes down like that and then up to the top I could be wrong um, 
but uh, it just picks these in order basically um, and then you're selecting one of the profiles now remember you've only got empty okay when you've got it first of all you only got one empty oh let me just show you so if you want to make changes save preset change the name say okay and it will save that if it's a, if you change the name it will create a new preset I don't want to I've got lots let's go to the next one and this is the one uh, to me is most important now I always have auto gain on you don't have to uh, but you can see now if you watch that screen you can see I can move and you can see the thing moving to the right to the left okay and I can scale it to make it bigger or smaller. Now it will naturally ping it to fill the screen. So it'll take, now if you're running, and this is an overscan demo. If you're running a display that isn't got nothing in the overscan and you want to scale it, you can scale it to stretch it to fill the screen. <clears throat> also borders, as I've explained before, borders basically cover up any, any scrappy areas if there is. Um, you could in theory close off that little bit on the left hand side but it's fine for me so if you want to up down the gain it increases and relieves and lowers the it's not the brightness but it is it says the bar brightness a bit more involved than that uh, let's go to the next one uh, this is the one that seems to have caused people to get you know a bit excited about scan lines now I'm not a personally a big fan of scan lines if I don't like them at all um, but you can press that button and turn them on which again you might not be able to see it um, but let me bring up the other window right so I've got scan lines on scan lines off scan lines and then I can make the intensity you can see how it changes basically it just increases the scan lines and turn them off again okay <clears throat> there's a line filter. I don't know what the line filter does. Well, we can find out, I suppose. Oh, I see. Yeah, it just so you can play around with these as much as you like. Again, I don't use them, but that is the one there. Is a lot of people have um, made comments I didn't explain. Okay, so that's how you do that. Right now, what you can do is there's a developer mode if you want to switch that on, so you can see things as you turn them on and off. So you see turn it on turn it off okay so it basically allows you to to uh, get a record of what you're doing uh, you need to go if you want to learn about these you need to go and uh, um, you know study elsewhere because uh, I don't really want to go into these details definitely don't turn off the uh, external clock generator leave that because it's got a clock on board if you're having trouble with the 50 Hertz not being displayed you could switch it to 60 um, but leave that as it is for now uh, there are more knowledgeable people than me um, these settings are pretty good for the average person so I'd be inclined to leave uh, again this is again this is another one uh, I would keep well clear unless you know what you're doing um, I don't really want to get involved in this I've played with it but you know if you want to play with that's up to you in here now you've got access point by default it's set up as an access point so it acts as a web server and you hook into it like a, an access point like I did earlier and you then you can then connect to the web server and do what I'm doing now there is this one which will allow you to connect to your network and you are on your own on this one because I can't give you advice on this because it'd be your network um, but I would be inclined to leave it as that um, there you can connect to your network but if it goes wrong then you'll need to go on the internet and get information on how to reverse it these two though are very useful the backup and restore so basically you can back up the settings on here and you can see it pops it up the top and you can see where it saves it now obviously I'm on a Mac uh, Windows will be different but it will store it somewhere and then you can share that with friends or just use it as backup which is absolutely brilliant one of the be one of the best things obviously you can uh, restart and reset to the defaults reset to defaults doesn't change the profiles um, the new version apparently you can remove profiles which is actually quite nice so as you can see that's the basics um, at the moment leave it in 128720 when we've done the new firmware 
you can switch it up to either 1280, 1024 or 960 um, and you know then save them accordingly. But remember, whenever you make any changes to save the preset, if you want to save it in the same place, don't change the name. Um, but by default, you will only have empty. So you can build up your own profiles and then you can access them from the OLED with the jog dial. Hope that helps. Uh, a bit ad hoc. Um, no doubt there'll be questions on the back of this, but I think that's one for Google. Thanks a lot.